Hey, we're going to continue on talking about how to destroy microbes, and now we're going to talk about dry heat. So dry heat is less effective than moist heat, but it still is used. So dry heat works um, in with a similar process as moist heat. It denatures proteins, um, and we utilize dry heat on items that can't get wet. Um, we use them in our laboratory to sterilize our inoculating loops between um, transfers of microbes. And we use dry heat oftentimes to kill microbes in food when we are cooking foods or when we're trying to get rid of um, waste products. The next method of removal would be filtration. And so a filtration, a filter is basically a structure that has very small holes or pores. And these pores allow microbes, um, certain types of microbes might be able to get through, but it's going to exclude uh, microbes that are too large to go through those pores. So when I think of a filter, the first thing I think of is coffee. And we've all, well, maybe not, but most of us have seen at least coffee um, brewed. You put coffee grounds in a filter and then you use water, goes through the coffee grounds. And what comes out is a delicious um, dark liquid called coffee. But we don't have any of those grounds. The same process occurs with membrane filters. We are able to filter fluids through. The fluid goes to the other side, but the microbes don't. Um, HEPA filters are filters that are used in the air. Um, so they are specialized filters that we use in hospitals to keep air clean. Um, we use them in safety cabinets and most, I think, vacuums now contain HEPA filters to, to clean the air of microbes in our um, houses. Irradiation is another process um, to kill microbes by the use of light rays. So irradiation is a form of ionizing radiation. And this type of radiation is bactericidal. Remember that the term bactericidal means bacteria are killed. Cidal means to kill. And so ionizing radiation kills the bacteria, and it does it in different ways. So irradiation is going to utilize the ionizing radiation to kill spoilage microbes off of um, fruits and vegetables. This actually allows us to store fruits and vegetables for a longer period. If you've ever purchased uh, fruits or vegetables from a farmer's market, you know that they go bad a lot quicker than the fruits or vegetables from the store. That doesn't mean they're worse. They're not, they're not worse fruits or vegetables, but they have not been irradiated. That's the difference. Um, irradiation allows us to store those items for weeks. Um, so this can sterilize, um, we can use, we can use ionizing radiation to sterilize heat sensitive materials. Um, and like I said, we use ionizing radiation to kill microbes off of foods. Ultraviolet radiation is a form of ionizing radiation that damages DNA. And so it does so by causing thymine dimers. So if you remember from a general biology class, um, your DNA is composed of four nucleotides, guanine, cytosine, adenine, and thymine. So thymine is one of those nucleotides and a thymine dimer occurs when you have two thymine on the same strand of DNA. And instead of attaching to the adenine on the um, complement strand, they attach to each other, which does not allow for the DNA to work the way it's supposed to. It doesn't, um, you're not able to transcribe it anymore. You can't replicate it properly. And so this kills the microbes. Ultraviolet radiation does not go through 
um, glass or plastic in general. Um, it's not very good at penetrating. And so um, you can utilize plastic or glass as a block for the, the um, UV radiation. And a lot of times we do that. We put plastic over something when we're when we're radiating them so that we don't get damage to our skin or our eyes. Um, X radiation, which I think I had, uh, I thought I had it written down somewhere, but I guess I didn't. Apologies. X radiation uh, causes breaks in the DNA strands themselves, which then causes the microbes to die because when you break the DNA strands apart, the microbe can no longer replicate its DNA or um, produce proteins needed for replication. And then we have microwave radiation. So microwaves do not affect microbes the way you might think. Um, microwave radiation doesn't hurt microbes, but the heat that is produced can kill microbes. Um, because microwaves, um, microwave ovens don't heat evenly, microbes can survive when you um, heat them up in a microwave, when you heat food up in a microwave. So you have to be careful of that. If you're concerned that some food might have microbes in it, you may not want to heat it in the microwave. Of course, if you're worrying about food being in, um, oh, here's my thymine dimer example. If you're worried about food having microbes in it, you might not want to eat it at all. Just saying. Um, and the last mechanism that a uh, physical mechanism is high pressure processing. So we talked about uh, utilizing pressure in the autoclave, but the pressure in the autoclave is very minimal compared to the pressure in high pressure processing. What high pressure processing does is it um, denatures proteins and alters cells permeability um, by increasing the pressure of the environment um, up to 120,000 pounds per square inch. So this does not change the flavor or the color of foods, but it does kill microbes. All right, so this is a table that goes through the different types of physical methods, moist heat, dry heat, um, talks about the characteristics of each and the use. Um, here we have filtration, irradiation, and high pressure uh, processing. So I'm going to stop here and we'll get into the chemical methods of destroying microbes in our next video. Bye.